Hello, I'm L Director. This is L Director Vision, and today I have an unboxing. I actually started to open the box, and I'm like, oh, I should film this and put this on YouTube because I'm not making videos as much as I used to anymore because I don't have time. But now I actually have something like meaningful to do with it, so this is cool. Uh, yeah, it's this is a new camera. Well, new for me, sort of new for me. I'll explain why in a second. I got this on eBay actually, so eBay is amazing. Thank you, eBay. This is cool, and some of you guys can already tell because you know my personality by the smirk I've got that this is not going to be uh, standard. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Alright, it's the right one. I was worried they were going to mess it up and give me the, the wrong thing. And check this out, this camera actually comes with its own really cool looking briefcase. Actually, you know what, this would make a cool movie prop. That's sweet. Alright, get rid of the box. Bye bye box. So this is cool. It is comes with keys and locks for it. And uh, oh, th this is so cool. I am like so giddy right now because uh, yeah, you'll see what I say. Th this camera is absolutely amazing. It's it's real. It's real. Oh, this is so cool. All right, get the camera out. And, are you guys ready for this? Check out this cutting edge technology if it was 1989. This is a Sears video camera uh, from 1989, or was it 1987? I think it's 1989. This was actually my first video camera ever. And uh, as you guys know, I've lost all my stuff multiple times between moves and fires and things. And, um, so just recently, I actually started getting on eBay and looking for old camera models. And I actually, now with this, have replaced every camera that I've ever used as, as part of my filmmaking career. And I'm just kind of a nostalgic person. I want to have these all up on display, kind of like in a little miniature camera museum. And I can look at them fondly and say, oh yeah, I remember what I learned with that one. I remember what I learned with that one. That one was the one I made my first movie with, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, this, this is so cool. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I used to... Oh, just sit in my room with my Legos and do stop motion animation movies with these. This was a pretty hefty unit at the time. You know, what's funny is it's actually lighter than I remember. Um, but yeah, so story behind this, my dad bought this model, brand new, uh, when it came out. I'm going to go with 1989 because I think that's the year it was. Uh, it doesn't say on here, it just says made in Japan. Um, but yeah, so my dad bought it to film family vacations and, you know, basically do a whole movie kind of stuff like that. Uh, vacations, Christmas, birthdays, holidays, um, and then they also would do inventory of things in the house. So if the house ever got broken into and stolen, for insurance purposes, they had everything documented, you know, jewelry, firearms, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, so that was that. And then eventually my dad got a, a Hi8 camera in the mid 90s and so it's yeah it would have had to have been 1995 Christmas in 95 I was 10 years old and they gave this technically to my brother and I but I adopted it pretty quick and so I rushed off into my bedroom and I started like making little movies with my toys I put the camera down here on a chair and was yanking toys around in front of it and stuff and just having all sorts of fun with it but um, yeah and then I used that for see, 10, so that would have been 3rd or 4th grade. I used it from there up until up until my junior year of high school. Senior year of high school. Wow. So I used that for a long time, up until 2002, uh, which is when I bought my first mini DV camera, which we'll show you guys here now, too, because I figure, why not? We're talking about cameras, and I got a camera set up. So, yeah. But this is actually in really good shape. It just needs to be cleaned up. It's a little bit dusty. And, uh, you put the full-size VHS tape in the camera, and then you can go off and do your filming. This didn't come with a battery or a power supply. I don't know if it works, but since it's just going to be on display, I really don't care. Um, and it also came with the telephoto lens, which my camera had before as well, too. It came with a lens, and it screws just onto the front of it there. So, yeah, I'll get this all cleaned up, and we'll put it on display, and life will be good. So there's that. that so that's my first camera. The first camera I actually bought for myself was this one. This is a little JVC mini DV camera. 
And uh, again, uh, this has all been repurchased now on eBay because they were all destroyed in the fire, but it's the same, same, same model, so same camera essentially. But yeah, so I bought this my senior year of high school, and I used this to make my first short film called Ninja Nerd. And then I also used it for countless other short films and movies. When I ran my own video production company, this is what I used as well too to, to film things. I did weddings, I did anniversary videos, I did, uh, did I do any commercials with it? I think I did one or two TV commercials with this thing too. So uh, yeah, did a, I, I used this camera for years, um, but I really got a lot of use out of it. Like I every single day. In fact, when I was in high school, I carried my little camera bag with this thing with me every day. It was like people called it my purse because it never left my side. I always had my camera with me. I was always filming stuff and editing. It was uh, has a FireWire interface. It was the only way you can get it into the computer because it was a tape-based camera. And yeah, so this was the first one that I bought and I used it for 2002 to 2007, uh, which I used partially for my first feature film, and then the camera died. So I got about four years out of this one. And then uh, a year later, I bought this one, okay? This is the Canon ZR800. This is actually the one I shot the first Leap movie with. So for those of you guys who are wondering how I did the first Leap film, shot that with this. And uh, this one actually works. The battery on that one doesn't hold a charge, but I can just show you. For those of you young whippersnappers that have never seen tape before, this is a mini DV tape. This is how we used to have to record our videos. And then that just fits in here. And sucks it in. And closes and away you go. Now, this particular camera was my first one to actually have a widescreen display on it. If I open up this one, bring it closely in here. You guys can see this one's a 4x3 display right there. This one is 16x9. Now this one would shoot widescreen, but it, it had two different ways of doing it. One of them was it would add black bars to the top and the bottom and still keeping your 4x3 frame. The other way was an anamorphic widescreen where it actually squeezed it into the image by changing the aspect ratio of your pixels, uh, the, the pixel ratio. And so it would make everything look super squashed and like super tall and skinny and then in the computer it would stretch it out to be a true widescreen image. This one actually was using the same basic concept of stretching your, your pixels but it was actually able to display it in a widescreen format which was really cool and super helpful so this was great. Um, like I said I used this for Leap and I did a couple other little short projects with it and stuff like that but when I, and mostly though I use this for parkour videos, I used it for the behind the scenes of Rise of the Beast, and I used it for uh, the first four episodes of Surviving the Wild actually. So those of you guys that are Surviving the Wild fans, this is the camera that I did those first four episodes with. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So that is my cinema camera collection, part of it. I've got another one up here. This was the first HD camera I used on Surviving the Wild, but I've never used this for short films. Because by the time I got this, I was already using this for my movie stuff. So this became purely a survival, Surviving the Wild camera. And then my other Surviving the Wild camera is the one I'm filming with right now. And I got, of course, GoPros and stuff like that. But, so anyway, like I said, I, I used this one for Leap. And then when the time came to do Rise of the Beast, I wanted to go high definition. And I wanted Shallow at the Field, I wanted 24 frames a second. Basically all the stuff that I didn't have with that camera, I needed to go to the next level. And that's when we got the Canon Rebel T2i, or 550D. And uh, in case you guys are curious, I have an unboxing video right here, where I unboxed this for the first time back in 2010, July 3rd, 2010. And uh, yeah, so I used this for Leap 2, I used it for a couple other short films, Becoming Born, Shot a bunch of music videos with it. Um, yeah, really got a lot of use out of this thing too. And then, of course, the fire happened. And so we've replaced that with this beast. This is the Ursa Mini 4K model. This is my shoulder rig and everything for it. Screen flips out like that. And this is now the camera that I'm going to be using on Leap Revelation and the one I use for all my current short films. Uh, such as the uh, Cube Transformer spoof, and yeah, oh, I used uh, this one on the first version of the Cube, 
the, the Transformers move. So, way, way, way back when we used this one for that. Check screen size difference here, guys. Isn't that crazy? Like, look at the size of these LCD screens. The, the new one is just so, so much better. I love my Ursa Mini. It's been a great little camera. Um, and it's been great not shooting on tape anymore, you know, just using memory cards and, and stuff like that. So anyway, that is my unboxing video. That is my camera collection. Um, oh, just to show you guys, this is kind of funny, actually. So here is on my lap, you know, what I'm using now. And here's where I started, right? So I started with the big camera. And then over time, they got smaller and smaller and smaller. And then they started getting bigger and bigger again, right? So I went from the little tiny standard def cam to a DSLR to this. But this is where we started. So now my rig is, the actual camera is about the same size as this VHS one, but all pimped out and everything. Of course, it's, it's much, much bigger. So anyway, I'm L Director. This has been L Director Vision. I hope you've enjoyed. And uh, stay tuned. Surviving the Wild is coming. I promise, I promise, I promise. I'm just trying to finish up the edit on the first episode of Season 2. Uh, I do have partial edit done on Episode 2. And I'm hoping this summer to get out and do a few more new shows as well. So it just it takes me a while to get these things out. I do apologize about that, but it's, it's the way it is. I mean, life happens. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, like this video. Give me a thumbs up. There we go. Oh, by the way, thank you guys so much for subscribing. We are now just under 12,000 subscribers, which is incredible. I never in a million years thought that would happen when I started this channel. Uh, so it's super cool, and I'm super grateful for each and every one of you for um, taking an interest in the, the things that we do. So take care. God bless. We'll see you later.